So we posed the question yesterday. Do you think we should turn this into an ocean pour or do you think we should leave it as is? And we actually had the vast majority say, this is a great learning project for doing floors before your big floor. Just start on a little entry or something that you can play with. I think I'm gonna start Deep Blue Sea out here and welcome them to their new vacation condo right here on the Big Island, Hawaii. I can't wait to see the next step. This is our second seal coat. We'll come back when this is dry and we'll continue. You got this, we'll see you on the outcome of the voting because we're gonna do what you vote. Guys, you know what whales are no good at? Hide and seek. That's correct. <laughs> All right, we're going over old porcelain tile. I'm gonna use Level Quick. The reason I'm using Level Quick is to make everything higher than the original grout joints. We don't wanna use epoxy to level this floor. We wanna use a floor leveler because it's less money and it'll really get it flat prior to prepping for epoxy. So let's go ahead and Level Quick this foyer or this ultimate entry where we have the sharks and the manta rays and the whales greeting us to our ohana. Here we go. Pro tip, read the instructions on your floor leveler. I'm gonna add five quarts of water prior to pouring my powder. That's because when I pour that powder, I don't wanna have it cake to the bottom of my bucket. Putting the water in first and mixing while I pour that powder in will give me a great mixture without clumps. Pro tips, all around. You might think that you have it too thin. As long as you read those instructions, you don't. It's supposed to level out on its own. If it's too thick, you're just gonna have mounds and humps. So follow those instructions, get it nice and thin, and use cool water. If you use hot water, it'll prematurely set up and it might not level all the way. Also, wherever your floor vents, your cracks and your crevices are, be sure to fill those with an adhesive or a caulking prior to pouring your level quick so you don't lose it down those floor vents, especially if you're on a second story. All right, that should be dry in about four hours so I can walk back into our place. I'm gonna go ahead and use some underpainting techniques on this and create the vibe as you walk in to the ocean experience. All right, let's let this dry and we'll get started on the next step. Hey guys, I have a question for you. I help make some of the videos here at Stoneco Countertops and we have so many amazing projects that I don't know which one to start next. So let me know in the comments below which video you would like to see first. Either A, an ocean wall project, it's pretty cool. B, a jungle kitchen project, that one's pretty cool too. Or C, it is a custom wood cap on the end of a kitchen with some epoxy in the wood and a pillar that looks like a tree that's made out of concrete. So ocean wall, jungle kitchen out off the grid or the end cap in the kitchen. Let me know in the comments below. I'm gonna use our epoxy dispersion fluid. This is gonna allow the metallics to be very thin when I add them to the floor epoxy. I'll pre-mix my metallics into our thin dispersion fluid and it doesn't allow any tadpoles or chunks to be in that floor and epoxy. That's a pro tip and that'll make your floors lay out like a sheet of glass. Yeah, so this doesn't affect the epoxy as far as the curing. It still allows it to be very durable. Is there too much of that dispersion fluid you can add to a project? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 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 All right, we're gonna start with a base of ocean blue. All right, look, I added a lot of powder to that, right? You guys concur? Yes. Watch this. Oh, wow, cool. Look at how it just eats it up and makes it totally 
there's not no chunks in there. See what I mean? And I'm using just we ran out of paint mixing sticks, so I'm using a Hawaiian mixing mixing stick right here. You want to see a really cool pro tip? Mm -hmm. All right. There's a mixing stick. Here you go. Do you see any chunks in there? No. Dispersion fluid, man. Not, nothing settled? No. That's great. No, look, look when I empty, look at the bottom how perfectly mixed that stuff is. And the nice thing is, is smell. It's not a solvent, dude. You're not. There's little to no smell whatsoever. Yeah, you're not gonna, you're not gonna blow out your work area with, with a bunch of uh, solvent. All right, now I gotta go two to one ratio, right? So I'll go one quart uh, A and, and a half a quart B. Ready? Here we go. Look at how good it mixes in, man. When you're doing a flooring project, you notice we've already filled our grout joints with level quick, and now we're doing our prime coat. The prime coat is easy. You're just gonna do about one ounce per square foot. You're gonna trowel that out. In this case, I'm gonna use a drywall trowel. I'm gonna trowel that out. I'll cut in my edges with a brush. I'll let that dry, and I'll be ready for my flood coat. I wanna make this look like you're walking into water. We're gonna walk on water, and so I might do multiple artistic coats, but we do large floors. Did you see our video we, where we did a 4,000 square foot floor with a team of three? It's that easy. Guys, flooring can be taken to the next level with Magic Metallic Epoxy from Stone Coat. All I'm doing is pushing it up to that baseboard and then letting it back off on its own. But that's gonna seal this level quick really good. You're gonna have air bubbles in this first coat. That's totally normal and that's okay. All I'm doing is just sealing this concrete so it doesn't let air bubbles come up when I do a, a big coat, a thick coat, a flood coat. I don't even think I need this paintbrush. See, I'm just gonna push it up to that baseboard, kinda get it a nice tight line, and then I'll pull it away. So I'm just gonna use that trowel just to push it right up to that stair. That's it, right there. And then I'll pull it back. And see that level quick, it filled most of those holes for me. So I, I, I'm basically watertight here. So I can push this liquid around and not have a problem. Wow, that's easy. You can see all those little bubbles and that's normal. We're going over a porous substrate and that's why we do basically a sacrificial coat. And I put metallic in it and that's because that's I want to start giving us the illusion of water and when you do multiple coats like this, use that to your advantage. Maybe use different shades of blue. Now this is a lot of fun as an entry because mm -hmm. it's so small, it's easy. This is a great learning project for doing floors before your big floor. Just start on a little entry or something that you can play with and you'll see just how unintimidating it really is. Ah, <laughs> all right, seal coat's done. That was cool.
All right, we're at day two. All we needed to do was sand the floor to create a mechanical bond between the two layers. Now remember, if you do this before 24 hours is up, you really don't need to sand. But I wanted to just in case. It's a small area, so I wanted that extra assurance of a mechanical bond. So I went ahead and I sanded. I wiped the dust with 91% isopropyl alcohol, and then I applied the next seal coat. I had a few little pin dot bubbles. It actually laid out really, really nice, but we finished it with bubble free second seal coat. One ounce per square foot, I troweled it on, and I used a contrasting color. As you can see, it's starting to look more realistic. The deeper I get into this project, the more I'm thinking ocean pour. I think I'm gonna start deep blue sea out here and work my way to a white sand beach and welcome them to their new vacation condo right here on the Big Island, Hawaii. I can't wait to see the next step. This is our second seal coat. We'll come back when this is dry and we'll continue. Let's go. Check out this floor that we just finished our second seal coat on. We're doing under the water, man. I love the entrance to this condo. You go up there and the first impression is gonna be that water. I got Mitch and Luke out here. What's up, guys? What's up, Insiders? What's up, Insiders? This thing looks sick. Yeah, we're out here doing some projects. We went and did a whole kitchen yeah. and a bathroom yesterday. How long oh, yeah. did that take us? Two hours, I think. Not long at all. Out it looks the, great. Out in the middle of the jungle. In the middle of the jungle. <laughs> Off the grid. Off the right. Grid. Man, check this out, guys. What do you think? I got a question. Should we do an ocean pour scene? Should we leave this as the underpainting? And should we do, you know, beach up there where it meets the stairs and out here would be the deeper sea, do some waves? What do you vote? Should we do an ocean pour or should we leave it deep blue sea? Let me know in the comments below. What would you do, Mitch? Ocean pour with the white sandy beach. Ocean pour. Uh-oh. We got, we got votes for ocean pour. What would your vote be? Let me know in the comments below. You got this. We'll see you on the outcome of the voting because we're going to do what you vote. So we posed the question yesterday, do you think we should turn this into an ocean pour or do you think we should leave it as is? And we actually had the vast majority say, leave it as is, leave it like it's the water that you're walking into. So we're gonna take that advice, even though we were all leaning towards an ocean pour, let me know what would you have done? I have one more color, it's our blue green, metallic powder. We're gonna add a tiny bit of that, just a little bit in that final clear coat, that flood coat. And that's gonna give it three colors. We started with our Crater Lake Blue, then we did our Blue Earth, and we'll finish with our Blue Green. And you can see these walls, they were fogged with some Blue Green. They look Blue Green, and that's really gonna match, and you're gonna see depth into this floor with those three metallic colors. And that's a pro tip. If you're gonna do multiple seal coats, just add different colors of metallic and you'll get a floor that looks like a pro came in and dominated that project. That's how you go from good to great and that's how you make your floor look fantastic. That's all I'm gonna use right there. Just leave it really translucent. Okay, time to mix. Okay, ready? That's the perfect amount of metallic. You know, you really don't need to cut in with a brush when you trowel it like this. You can push it right up to that baseboard. And you know, just don't go too fast and you could do a lot quickly. And that, that trowel, this stuff is the perfect consistency. It flows like a dream here. 
That is really pretty. You know, when you're troweling this out, it's not super even, but this stuff lays out and self levels so good that you, <laughs> you don't need to be perfect with it at all. All right, I'm gonna torch this out and then we'll open that door and finish the floor. We're really sealed well now. There's no air coming through. This is gonna come out beautifully. All right, I basically did three seal coats, about one ounce per square foot per coat. Now, if you have really sealed concrete where it's not letting a lot of air through, you can do one seal coat and then a flood coat. But I wanted that triple layer look. I wanted the three different metallic colors in there, so I'm really glad that we went this route. Tomorrow, I'll sand this and I'll do our ultimate top coat for flooring. Yes, I wanna get that little bit lower sheen level so it's not super glossy and it'll be very scratch resistant. This is how you finish a floor to look this good for a very long time, years to come. We're gonna have the water ocean welcome us to the ocean condo, check it out. All right, it's the next day. Our flooring epoxy has laid out like glass. It looks fantastic. I'm gonna sand the surface with 220 grit, clean that with isopropyl alcohol, and we're ready for the ultimate top coat. All right, we got the floor all sanded. It's time for the ultimate top coat. This is gonna bring that sheen level down and the durability up. This entryway is gonna see its fair share of traffic and it'll stay looking outstanding for years to come. Let's roll it on, then we'll back roll it with our dry roller. We're gonna use our two roller technique. Have you seen our video on how we apply the ultimate top coat. We'll link that in the description and that'll make you a pro that'll teach you how to do this process, but it's simple. We'll mix at a two to one ratio. We'll add a touch of water. We'll first apply it with our wet roller and then we'll back roll with our dry roller. Here we go. Shake part A and then we're gonna do our two to one ratio. But by shaking part A, we'll agitate and mix the matting agent, which gives it that natural sheen level. All right, I'll mix the two parts and then I'm gonna add the water after I've mixed for about two minutes. I'm using a stir stick because I don't want to entrain more air than necessary. You can use a paddle mixer, but just keep it on a low speed. That way you don't bring a bunch of extra air into the mix. All right, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. That water thins out the mixture a little bit, makes it a little bit easier to roll. You just don't wanna to add too much because adding too much water will actually make it less durable. So read those instructions and follow those and you'll get great results. 
Guys, if you haven't done this system before, you can see we've done an entryway, and this entryway isn't huge. This is a great starter project. This is a floor that gets you ready for those big garage floors, or the showroom, or even your game room or man cave. These floors can get really outlandish and fun, but they're labor intensive. So start with a project that's small, something that doesn't overwhelm you. Or you can do a project and stop at a doorway, somewhere where you can hide that seam. If you're gonna do that, just start in a manageable space and work your way up towards those big projects. All right, guys, I got a really consistent mixture here. We're ready to apply this. Now remember, once you get it mixed, Go for it, don't wait. You don't have the same amount of working time as you do our normal stone coat countertop epoxy. This is designed to set up fast so I can use this floor tomorrow. If you did this on your countertops, you'd be able to use your countertops the next day. This is a fast curing product, therefore we better move. So I can do this whole floor very quickly, but if you need to, separate your project out into manageable sections. This floor is fine to do in one section. I could do about 50 square feet before I would mix up my next batch. Make sure you get all the lint off your roller covers, and that's what we're doing right here. Want some fresh tape? Yeah. That works good. So I'm really gonna saturate this roller and just apply it as fast as I can here. I'm gonna come under that doorway because I know that doorway needs to open so that I overlap that section. Now that I've applied it wet, I'm just gonna come back and dry roll that and just leave a thin film on this floor. It doesn't need to be thick. Oh, that looks really good. Wow. All right, I'm gonna open this door. All right, let me see that next one. Keep this one off the Copy. deck. Okay, we're just gonna go ahead and dry roll, roll this with one fresh roller now. Oh, that's super dry, so this is gonna get off any excess and really hide those lap lines. I think we're good. You wanna come see it, honey? What do you think? It looks awesome. Are you just saying that? No, I actually really like that. I like the colors. I like the way that it feels. This is awesome. This looks great. The sheen's great for the floor. It's a good first impression. Yeah, it's gonna crush it. You know, those of you who voted not to do the ocean waves, I, I think that was a good vote. Like yeah. you're walking into the deeper water, and yeah, it, you know. This looks great. This was a really easy project, and I think the best part, we didn't even have to demo the tile. Yeah, I mean, this is fantastic. It's beautiful. I hope you learned a ton of pro tips on how to apply an epoxy floor. The steps are simple. Try this on your own small project. And remember, until next time, from Stone Coat Countertops, 
You got this. We'll see you on the next epoxy floor. Bonus content. Look at that, man. Man. I love that top coat. I'm loving, that's just what I was gonna say. You stole my words. That looks fantastic with the top coat. What's your favorite animal? Is it the, is it the humpback whale, the manta ray? Yeah. The tiger shark? I think the one that resembles me the most, the humpback whale. Humpback whale. Mm -hmm. Baby beluga. Guys, you know what whales are no good at? Hide and seek. That's correct. <laughs> Plus they have sudden urges to leap out of the water. <laughs>